All right, Thursday, June 6th, 2019. We've got the gear legs on the fuselage, tail wheels on. So she's sitting up on her own. Of course, the gear legs are a little bit, they're not splayed out completely yet. They will be once the engine's installed. So I've installed the engine, uh, engine mount. Put these bolts in a little differently than most people are. And uh, there's two reasons for that. One, AC43.13 talks about installing bolts in such a way that they would not work themselves out if the nut came off the other side. And the other reason is, because I just don't have room to be pushing bolts in through here or in through here. There's just not room with rudder pedal assemblies in the way. Up here I've got instrument stuff, instrumentation, wiring and stuff that's in the way, so I couldn't do that. These had to be torqued to about, I torqued them to about 175 inch pounds. So, uh, and I found that in the AC4313 uh, torque settings. They list all of the uh, torques for the different size nuts and bolts. I've got some inspection panels on. Here's the interior, flat black, with the carpet installed. Course we've seen the instrument panel before. So here we go down the fuselage. I've got some more inspection panels on. Of course, here's the T3 tail wheel. And right next to it is the engine. This is the Lycoming Thunderbolt IO540 experimental. Nine to one compression, roller tappets, ported and polished. So this engine will need 20, 25 hours before we get the, uh, yeah, 25 hours of flight time before we can carry passengers. So some of the things I had to think about when I got the engine is where's everything gonna go? And there's not a lot of resources for that. Uh, until Mike Silvernagel told me about the RV-10 firewall forward kit. This is all I have from Bearhawk on installing the engine. So there's, there's a little bit of discussion on it, but really RV-10 or Vans supplies an RV-10 firewall forward kit and these are the plans that go with it. So. This is fantastic stuff. This, these are all detailed plans, starting with the cowling, baffling. They give all the details for each piece, how they all go in, and then it discusses the control cables, where all the control cables go, and how all that works. And you go to the fuel system. Then you go to the oil system, then you go to the, the exhaust system. So the RV-10 firewall forward kit comes with, like it says, everything forward of the firewall, alternator, oil cooler, battery mount boxes, um, control cables, um, geez, I mean, and then they also include the exhaust, but I didn't, I didn't want the RV-10 exhaust kit or exhaust system because I'm having veteran make a custom exhaust for the Bearhawk. But you can see here's the scat tubes. Um, got oil cooler over here. There's different hoses of various types that are going to be required. Uh, oil cooler box here. I mean, it's really detailed. Every nut, bolt, clamps. Firewall penetrations, it's all there. Um, the other thing that was a little disappointed in when I bought the, when the engine was delivered, I didn't get any, really hardly any documentation on it, except for, uh, you know, all the results off of the test stand. They ran it for three hours. I asked them to run it for three hours and I got all the, the results from that, but there was no operating manual, anything. So I had to get in touch with the sales guy and he sent me the PDF version of the proper operating manual for this engine, 
which again, I'm just surprised this just does not come with the engine. I guess they assume you have all this stuff. Also, there is a service instruction for uh, removing the preservative oil from the engine prior to installation. Here's another one for lubricating oil recommendations. And then finally, here's a section in here for, uh, let me get it open, the engine break-in. And everything's need to be done for the engine break-in. So that's an update on what we're doing, how everything's going. Uh, oh, by the way, also, let me show you real quick. I have, um, another thing I got from Lycoming was this service table of limits and torque value recommendations. I uh, really think that needs to be, it's, let's see, it's 191 pages, so I won't print it, but I'll have it as a reference in, on, my, uh, on my computer here. But you need this stuff for, you know, torque settings. Again, I didn't know what the torque setting was supposed to be for these engine mounts. And then I found out that's 30 foot pound. And it's just stuff like that you just don't know until you do the research on it. So anyway, that's where we are.